In less than two days, multiple tornadoes touched down across Mississippi. Some struck in the early morning hours when most people were still asleep. Warnings were issued according to procedure. On paper, the system did exactly what it was designed to do, but what followed did not unfold as expected. In many areas, power could not be restored on time. Water service became unreliable. Rural roads were cut off longer than usual. Schools closed even where buildings were not damaged, simply because basic systems could not operate safely. The physical damage was not always severe. Yet daily life in many communities slowed to a prolonged standstill, even long after the winds had stopped. If the tornadoes were only the starting point, then what made recovery so difficult? And more importantly, what does this reveal about the true resilience of Mississippi's infrastructure? For decades, people in Mississippi lived with a steady belief. Tornadoes were dangerous, but they were not mysterious. There were risk maps. There were warning sirens. There were rules passed down through generations. When the sirens sounded at night, people knew what to do. And when the winds calmed, life would find its way back to normal. That belief was not careless. It grew out of experience and from systems that had worked reliably for many years. Tornadoes could destroy homes, but people trusted that what remained would be enough for life to resume its familiar order. Power would return, water would stabilize, roads would be cleared, disruptions would be temporary. The recent severe weather in Mississippi began in a way many residents recognized. Warnings were issued, sirens sounded before dawn. In rural areas, many people had lived through similar moments enough times to believe they understood what they were facing. When morning arrived, the common feeling was that the most dangerous part had passed with the wind. But the data quickly showed that this belief rested on an assumption that was no longer holding true. Within a short span of time, multiple tornadoes touched down in different parts of the state. Some struck while most communities were asleep. Others arrived before response systems had fully recovered from earlier impacts. These events did not happen in isolation. They overlapped in ways that stretched rural resources across multiple locations at the same time. This did not always produce dramatic scenes of total destruction. Not every area was flattened. Not every school collapsed. There were no large casualty numbers that immediately labeled the event as an obvious disaster. Yet once the wind subsided, many communities still could not function as before. Power outages spread widely, especially in areas dependent on single distribution lines. Not just for a few hours, but long enough for basic daily needs to become a problem. Some schools were forced to close, not because they were damaged, but because there was no electricity to operate safely. Travel became more difficult as fallen trees, standing water, and damaged roads slowed movement. Repair crews had to divide their efforts among too many problem spots at once. These are not the images that dominate breaking news. But these quieter disruptions are what determine whether a community can return to normal life. No power means unstable water. Blocked roads mean delayed access to medical care, supplies, and repairs. For older residents and families in rural areas, prolonged disruptions like these are more than inconvenient. They create a lasting sense of unease as people begin to wonder whether the familiar infrastructure can handle another strain. Mississippi is no stranger to tornadoes. What makes this moment different is how the events stacked on top of one another and how power, water, and transportation systems had to absorb them. Much of the infrastructure here was built for a different pace of disasters. One where there was always enough time between storms to stand up, repair, and recover. That time gap is shrinking, and as many communities continue waiting for power, water, and transportation to return to stable conditions, another pressure has quietly taken shape. It does not come from the wind. It does not arrive with sirens in the night. It comes from systems being pushed beyond what they were ever designed to carry. That is what is leading many people to ask a question that still has no clear answer. A question that becomes harder to avoid when we look more closely at what comes next. Once the winds had fully died down, quiet differences between communities across Mississippi began to emerge. Not every place was affected in the same way, even when they appeared close together on weather maps. 
Some towns had electricity restored within a few days. In others, the lights did not return nearly as fast. Power is often the first visible sign that a community is recovering or falling behind. In many rural parts of Mississippi, the electrical grid depends on a limited number of main lines running through forests, farmland, and lightly traveled roads. When trees fall in large numbers and power poles are damaged at the same time, repairs become more than a technical challenge. They turn into a question of priority. In some areas, repair crews could reach damaged sites quickly, replace equipment, and restore service in a relatively short time. In other places, the same type of damage lingered much longer. Not because destruction was worse, but because distance, access conditions, and the sheer number of failure points exceeded what crews could handle at once. These differences rarely appear in headlines, but for local residents, they are felt clearly in daily life. When power outages stretch on, things once taken for granted become uncertain. Water pumps no longer run reliably. Refrigeration can no longer ensure food safety. Families, who depend on medical devices at home, must find ways to cope without a steady power supply. Water, closely tied to electricity in rural areas, quickly reveals itself as another weak point. Water pressure drops below normal levels. Some communities face contamination risks when heavy rain overwhelms already strained drainage systems. In situations like these, having water no longer automatically means having safe water. These disruptions do not happen evenly. Some communities receive early warnings, rapid assistance, and enough resources to recover within a short window. Others receive information later, support arrives more slowly, and residents are left to manage prolonged instability on their own. Roads form the final piece of this picture. In urban areas or near major highways, fallen trees and standing water are often cleared relatively quickly. But in rural regions, where a single narrow road may be the only way in or out, one blocked section can temporarily isolate an entire community. Relief vehicles, repair crews, and residents themselves are forced to wait. This creates a cycle that is hard to see from the outside. When roads are difficult to access, power restoration slows. When power is unavailable, water becomes unreliable. When basic services do not return, daily life remains suspended in an abnormal state. And when that state lasts long enough, the risk no longer comes from the storm that passed, but from the fragility of the systems absorbing its aftermath. From a distance, these differences may look like a matter of luck. But for the people living through them, the question begins to change. It is no longer why one place suffered more damage than another, but why recovery looks so different even when the initial damage was similar. Mississippi has long measured disasters by wind speed and tornado paths. But what follows shows that another measure is becoming just as important. How well infrastructure can absorb repeated shocks without pushing daily life into prolonged uncertainty. And as these contrasts grow more visible, another question begins to take shape, rarely spoken aloud, but hard to ignore. If a single storm can produce such different recovery paths, what happens when pressure comes not only from the wind, but from other forces quietly building in the background? While many communities were still waiting for stable power and clear roads, the weather did not pause to allow recovery to finish. Systems that had just endured tornadoes entered another phase, quieter but no less demanding. Rain arrived before the ground had time to dry. In many parts of Mississippi, the period before had seen little rainfall. Farmland and ground around residential areas became harder than usual. This often draws little attention until heavy rain falls over a short time. When that happens, water does not soak in as expected. It runs off, funnels into creeks, drainage ditches, and systems already operating under strain after the tornadoes. Unlike wind, rain does not announce itself with dramatic moments. It comes steadily, lasts longer, and is often treated as an after-effect of the storm. But for infrastructure already under stress, rain becomes a factor that extends disruption in a different way. In areas still without power, pumping and water treatment systems operate unevenly. Water pressure fluctuates. Quality control becomes harder to maintain. As heavy rain continues, the risk of flooding increases in low-lying areas, canal-side neighborhoods, and roads that have not yet been fully repaired. For many rural communities, this scenario is not unfamiliar. What makes this time different is timing. 
The rain did not arrive after everything had been rebuilt, but while recovery was still incomplete. Roads not fully cleared became harder to travel. Repair work slowed or stopped. Access to supplies and medical care became more difficult. The transition from tornadoes to heavy rain did not feel like separate events. It felt like a chain reaction, where each stage added pressure to systems not yet stabilized from the last. For residents, the experience was not a single disaster, but a prolonged state of emergency without a clear end. This is especially noticeable in communities used to managing on their own. When roads flood, when power remains unstable, when water is no longer as reliable, each day becomes a series of careful decisions. Where to go, what to use, how long to wait, and whether tomorrow will be any better. From the outside, these may look like isolated issues. A period of rain, a flooded road, a few days of delay. But when placed together, a different picture emerges. Infrastructure is not being tested by one major impact, but by the accumulation of smaller pressures from consecutive events. It was never designed to endure at the same time. In this context, Mississippi is not only responding to extreme weather. The state is facing a deeper challenge. How systems built for familiar rhythms of daily life can continue functioning as the pauses between events grow shorter. And as rain continues to fall while many communities are still unsteady after the wind, the question begins to shift. Not how long until things return to normal, but whether this instability is truly temporary or slowly becoming a familiar part of how Mississippi must live with weather from this point forward. As disruptions stretched into the following week, differences between communities across Mississippi became more visible. Not everyone moved through this phase in the same way, even when the distance between them was sometimes only a few miles. In some places, power and water gradually stabilized. Roads were cleared enough that repair crews and supply vehicles were no longer delayed. Daily life, while not fully back to normal, began to settle into a rhythm people could anticipate. But in other areas, that sense of stability never quite arrived. These gaps did not always reflect how severe the initial damage was. Some communities experienced similar levels of impact, yet their paths to recovery diverged sharply. When resources had to be spread across wide areas, places that were easier to reach and closer to major transportation routes were often restored sooner. Smaller rural communities, tucked deeper into secondary road networks, waited longer for basic infrastructure to function again. From a system perspective, these were practical decisions made under emergency conditions. From the perspective of residents waiting day after day, each delay carried added uncertainty. When power and water remain unreliable for several consecutive days, households with more resources often adapt more quickly. They may be able to leave temporarily. They may have backups. They may be able to pay for repairs early, even if reimbursement comes later. For them, the disruption has a limit. For others, especially older residents living permanently in rural areas, options are far more limited. Leaving is not always possible. Staying means accepting a prolonged, unstable routine, where every decision carries the question of whether conditions tomorrow will be better than today. These differences rarely appear on maps or in damaged statistics, yet they shape very real daily choices, whether to repair a home now or wait longer, whether to reopen a business while power remains unreliable, whether to continue living under temporary conditions for yet another stretch of time. Gradually, the line between recovery and being stuck becomes harder to see. The emergency does not end with a clear marker. It fades into an extended phase where life is not bad enough to call a disaster, but not stable enough to move forward. When this imbalance repeats after each severe weather event, the question begins to shift. It is no longer simply which community was hit harder, but why the same infrastructure system leads communities down such different recovery paths. That question still has no clear answer, and it becomes harder to avoid as the next layer of pressure quietly begins to form. While communities were still coping with uneven recovery, another kind of pressure began to surface over time. It did not come from a single event, but from the way repeated disruptions slowly altered how infrastructure functioned. Power, water, and transportation systems in much of rural Mississippi were built to support a relatively stable rhythm of life. They can withstand short-term shocks as long as there is enough time to inspect, repair, and return to normal operation. The problem is that time is becoming harder to guarantee. 
When one disaster ends but recovery remains incomplete, small issues begin to accumulate. A power line that runs less reliably. A water system under uneven pressure. A stretch of road never fully reinforced. On their own, these problems are often too small to draw attention. But when they exist together, infrastructure begins operating under prolonged strain. At first, this strain is difficult to notice. Life continues. People adjust, change routines, and accept temporary inconvenience. Over time, that very adaptation becomes a signal. It shows that daily life is being maintained by compensating for gaps, rather than relying on a stable foundation. In many rural communities, the dominant feeling is not panic, but fatigue. Fatigue from constantly adjusting daily routines. Fatigue from not knowing when the next disruption will arrive. And fatigue from wondering whether familiar systems can withstand another cycle of stress. These concerns are especially clear among older residents. When power is unstable, they think about medical equipment. When water becomes less reliable, they reconsider basic daily activities. When roads are difficult to travel, access to care and services must be recalculated. Life does not collapse, but it slowly contracts into a narrower zone of safety. From a broader view, this is not a problem easily measured by damage figures. It is not about what is lost immediately, but about long-term resilience. A system can recover from one heavy blow. But when impacts come closer together, mixing wind, rain, and extended disruption, recovery gradually becomes endurance. It is here that a clearer question begins to surface in many communities. If this unstable state is no longer an exception, but is becoming familiar, where is the limit at which infrastructure no longer has room to keep absorbing stress as it once did? Looking back on everything that has happened, what troubles many people in Mississippi is no longer any single tornado. The wind came and went. The rain will eventually stop. Those events, serious as they were, were moments in time. What is harder to grasp is what remains afterward. In many rural communities, life does not return to its former state in any clear way. It does not collapse, but it is not truly stable either. Power may be back, but not always reliable. Water still flows, but people use it more cautiously. Roads are more passable, yet a heavy rain can quickly bring back a sense of isolation. Taken one by one, these conditions do not amount to a new crisis, but together, they form a more uncomfortable question. Are these simply after effects of extreme weather or signs that infrastructure in these areas is being pushed into a more fragile state? Mississippi has long been accustomed to adapting. People here are no strangers to disaster and they do not panic easily when disruptions occur. But adaptation is not the same as recovery. A community can endure a great deal as long as it believes stability will return. When that belief starts to weaken, pressure no longer comes only from the weather, but from prolonged uncertainty. At a broader level, what has happened raises a question that cannot be answered easily with numbers or maps. When infrastructure is designed for a different pace of disasters, what happens if that pace changes and the breaks between events keep growing shorter? Can familiar systems continue to carry on as before? Or will they slowly reveal limits that once went unnoticed? This question does not demand an immediate answer. It exists in how people now watch weather forecasts with more caution, in how they prepare for disruptions once thought temporary, and in a growing sense that stability can no longer be taken for granted. Perhaps what weighs most heavily on many communities is not how strong the next storm will be, but whether life afterward will once again stretch into a long period of waiting or finally return to a balance they once believed was possible to regain. Thanks a lot for sticking with us till the very end. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of our daily uploads. And now, go ahead and explore some of our top recommended videos popping up on your screen. Goodbye, and see you in the next one.